Hebrews chapter 13, and looking at verse 15. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13 and verse 15 says, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. And that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. Father, I thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit here this evening. Father, I thank you for the victory that we have in your name. Father, I thank you that we're able to call upon you and change our circumstances in a split second. Father, I thank you that you've taken control of the situation. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Yes. So tonight for just a little while, I want to look at some benefits of praise. The writer to the Hebrews said, continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. For centuries, being a worshiper of God meant offering the right sacrifices. Following the right set of rules. Obeying a certain set of guidelines and worshiping on the right day of the week. We're in the right place. If we can remember the woman at the well when Jesus is trying to tell her about living water. He points out the mistakes that she has made in her life. And what was it that she done? She tries to change the subject and she says, well, what about this worship thing? Where do you think we should worship? My people worship over here, but your people are saying that we should worship in Jerusalem. And Jesus' answer is that there's a time coming when people will be able to worship wherever they want. And however they want. As long as they worship in spirit and in truth. And it seems to be an undying, continuous challenge wherever people gather for worship. Is the same problem that the saints of God have had down through the centuries. And we as a people have a tendency to make worship mechanical. And would you agree that it has been the same concerns all through the years? No matter what church you look at, no matter what people you think about, we're all in the same boat in this one. We think we need a certain type of a building. We think we need a certain order of service. People think the worship songs we sing should be a certain type. We think that in order to encounter God, we must approach Him at a certain time, in a certain place, on a certain day. But it's only normal for people to end up thinking this way. It's our nature kicking in. But God is not limited to, by our concepts of worship. For God wants us to worship Him in spirit yes. and in truth. Yes. The revivals that were experienced just over the past few years around Newfoundland confirms. The move of the Spirit was not limited to what people normally thought should happen. It was just time that people of God would be sitting around in fellowship after the music had died down. And after all the ones that were satisfied with the little nugget that they got were gone home. But the presence of the Holy Spirit would sweep in over the ones that were there and fill them to overflowing. Wave after wave would come over them. And as time went on and they thought it was settling down, there would be another wave. Of the mighty presence of God. It's not confined to what we think is going to happen. 
We tend to try to understand the supernatural power of God with just our tiny little natural minds. And there's no way that is going to be right. A pastor spoke on this subject some time ago and he explained when he was a child he did something wrong. And his parents would always make him apologize. And there were times when he didn't want to apologize. But yet he would have to go and say the right words. I'm sorry. But he really wasn't. He was just sorry. He was not sorry at all. The words were there. But they were not sincere. His parents wanted a sincere apology, but he didn't give it. The words of his mouth were right, the right words, but his heart was far as the east was from the west. There was an apology, but there was no sincerity behind it. It kind of reminds me of the passage that Jesus quoted from the Old Testament Quoted Mark 7 and 6. This people honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me. But can we all agree today that God would rather have sincere heartfelt worship. Than just a regular routine. Can we agree that sometimes unknowingly we get caught up in today's methods. We face the same problems that the worshippers down through the centuries have faced. And things tend to get complacent. People come to worship. But are not changed. People come to worship. But they're not challenged. People come to the house of the Lord to worship. But we don't have an encounter with God. But would you agree with me today that worship has to be a life-giving experience? And Jesus had told us that he has come to give us life. And a more abundant life beyond what this world can understand. Far beyond what we can pin together for a Sunday morning service. And far beyond what we can study and analyze on our own. This verse from Hebrews is talking about a true encounter of worship. It's talking about a continuous attitude of worship. Praise is to be our biggest method of worship and acknowledge of God's presence. It was back in the Old Testament, the fire on the altar in the temple was never to go out. It was to be burning continuously. Never to be extinguished. And so too our praises are to be a continuous offering unto God. And what's the possible reason behind a life of continuous praise? What could be there for us to pursue? There are three points about praise that I want to share and try to understand it a little bit better. First, praise gets our focus on the God. Would we all agree this evening that we need to praise God? We need to be grateful for the good things that he has given of us. We need to express our gratitude to him. When good things happen to us, we need to be thankful to the one who gives us the good things. James tells us every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And come down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Focus on that scripture is on the Father of lights, with whom there is no shadow. That in itself is a song of praise. For my father has no darkness. My father has no deceit. 
And my father has no alternative motives. He is pure love. He is pure light. He is pure mercy. Our father gives us grace. And gives us forgiveness. And he gives us love. And he gives us every good and perfect gift that we ever need. I read this story one time about Grandma's peanut brittle. <laughs> Grandma makes blue ribbon peanut brittle for the county fair. And she knows you love her peanut brittle, so she gives you some. Now she may grin and chuckle to her friends if you hide it and sneak out a piece at times to eat it by yourself. Of course, she's your grandma. She overlooks your hoarding of the peanut brittle. She's thankful that you like her candy. But now if you take that peanut brittle to work and share it with all of your friends, she becomes an instant celebrity. If your friends ever see your grandma, they will never fail to mention her peanut brittle. Think of that makes her feel when she calls on her friends. Oh look, they have taken my peanut brittle to work, and now they all want me to make some for them. It's not a complaint. It's a compliment. That is praise. You know, God loves it when we acknowledge all the good things that he has given to us. And he likes it even more when we share it with those who are around us. Would we all agree this evening that we should focus on what God has done? How he has forgiven us. How he has changed us. And how he sustains us every day. We need to be grateful to him. We should praise him. And tell our friends about him. That is praise. The fruit of our lips. If you're getting a little down in the dumb, start considering all the things God has done for you. Start thanking him for the blessings that he has given to you. That is praise. Yes. You need to focus on him. Worship and praise. No matter what the enemy throws at us each week. Number two, praise increases our understanding of God. Alexander Wyatt is a Scottish preacher from times past. He always began his prayers with an expression of gratitude. No matter what was going on, he began his prayers with a word of praise. One cold, miserable day, his congregation wondered what he would say this time. He got up to pray and he said, We thank thee, O Lord. That the weather is not always like this. So I'm thankful that God is a God who is able to change the weather. Jesus is in the boat sleeping. And the storm is raging. We are tossed here and there. We might be battered by the waves. And think that we're going to drown. Yet the master awakes. And he comes and he changes things. He is able to make a difference in our lives. Even when the storms of life are raging. Hebrews 11 and 19 is talking about Abraham. It says concluding that God was able to raise him up. Speaking about his son Isaac. Even from the dead. From which he also received him in a figurative sense. For we know how God had promised Abraham that he would be a father of great nations. And we know how Abraham had prayed to God for a child, yet for many years there was none. Yet later in life God was able to give him and Sarah a son. 
a little boy whom they named Isaac. Now you can imagine the excitement that was around. What a glorious birthday celebration and a time of praise that it must have been. I can almost hear Abraham say, thank you God, for you made it possible that I could have a son. Even in my old age, I praise you. A child had been born to Abraham and Sarah, and they were full of praise. But as we remember what takes place a little later, God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. To take him up to the mountain, to lay him on the altar, and to sacrifice him to the Lord. But Abraham was still obedient, still faithful. Abraham did what was asked of him. Of course, we know that God intervened and provided a ram caught in the brush. And God himself provided the sacrifice. Abraham believed that God was able. He was able to allow them to have a child in their old age. And he was able to provide a sacrifice in place of Isaac. He was able to even raise the dead. And Abraham believed that even if Isaac had been killed, he could have been brought back to life. Praise builds understanding. Praise God for what he has done for you. And understand that God is able. Praise God for what he will do for you. And thirdly, praise helps build your confidence in God. Exodus 15 and 2 tells us of the confidence that Moses had. He said, the Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God. And I will exalt him. Here is a man who is speaking in confidence. He doesn't say that God might be my strength. He doesn't say that God may be my song. He doesn't say that God could be my salvation someday. But he said God is. God is my strength. God is my song. God is our salvation. Moses had all the reasons in the world to express his confidence in God. He's already seen what God is capable of doing. God was able to release the chosen people from the bonds of slavery. And he did it. And he guided and provided them every step of the way. We also see in the prophet Joel in chapter 2 and 26. And great confidence in the power of the Lord. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And Joel says, you shall. Not that you might. You shall. Joel is speaking in confidence. You shall have plenty to eat. And you will be satisfied. You know, I have yet to hear of anybody, and I conclude with this. I have yet to hear of anybody that has trusted in Jesus. And walked in the confidence that he wants us to. And ever say that he came away unsatisfied. If you speak to anybody... That has experienced the Lord in a real way. That has experienced him in spirit and in truth. You will not find anybody that says that God did not meet their needs. 
You know that anybody that wakes up in the morning with total faith in the spirit for whatever the day brings shall never be unsatisfied. Jesus opens doors and allows us to open doors that most people can never dream could be open. And that's how Jesus works. When we bring ourselves back to praising Jesus in spirit and in truth, we're being brought back into focus on what God really wants from us. He does not want the same old routines, but he wants a fresh encounter with each of us. Just the same as we want a fresh encounter with him. It helps us get a stronger sense of his grace towards us. The things that we certainly do not deserve are ours no matter how we feel. And it helps us to stand satisfied with what the Lord is doing in our lives. And therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. And that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name.